Good morning. All right, good morning, guys. Happy Wednesday. I'm wearing that special schedule today. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, there's no school on Monday. And um, we're going to be turning in P4 tonight at 11.59. Remember, I'm not accepting any late work. Um, if there's an extenuating circumstance, for example, uh, you're sick and throwing up all day. Um, I'll be happy to talk to your parent about that. Um, you're at the hospital all night. Um, there's some type of family emergency. Uh, make sure you let me know and talk to me about that. Um, so uh, that those those would be extenuating circumstances. But just in general, I'm not taking any late work. So I'm trying to hold you accountable um, because there's things in real life that you're going to have to be held accountable for. And so I just want to make sure that I'm helping you um, to do that as much as possible so you're not shocked um, in real life when you're out on your own. All right. Um, this Friday morning, 8 o'clock, we're going to have um, exam P3. So um, I want to make sure I take any questions on that um, this morning, if you have any. And then on Tuesday morning, um, after the Labor Day weekend, Tuesday morning at 8 a.m., um, you're going to be taking exam P4, which is what I went over yesterday. I mean, it's one of the easier uh, sections in the review. And so I'm hoping that you all you, you will all do well on that one. That could really boost your grade up a lot. Okay, so with that, <coughs> excuse me, I wasn't sure what I was going to do today. If I want to go on to a new lesson, excuse me. If I want to go on to a new lesson, it, it really depends on how you're doing. So um, let's just start with some questions. Do you guys have any questions on P3 or P4? Um, on P3, can you go over number 31? Sure. P3? Yeah. P3, number three. Okay. I'm not going to give you anything that hard, um, but we can go over it. Okay. Square root of 200x cubed divided by, what is it? The square root of 10x to the negative one. Okay. When I see two radicals like this, um, I just want to simplify. So really, what I really want you to keep in the back of your mind all the time or in the foremost part of your mind, we want to simplify our life. We always want to simplify. Um, if we can simplify, we want to simplify right at the beginning. Now, my math teachers, when I was in high school, always waited till we got to the end. And I kind of resented them for that because it's just so much better to simplify at the beginning. So whenever I write down a problem, I look at this and go, oh, there, there is a relationship between 210. So I want to put that under one radical. Now, you cannot cancel like that. You have to put it under one radical. And remember, we're not flipping negative exponents because it'll cause you at least two extra steps. So we want to simplify right now. So what happens is these trailing zeros cancel and you end up with the square root of what, 20? And then the rule says when you divide monomials with the same base, you subtract 
the exponents. So we end up getting rid of the negative exponent. And now we're gonna do a prime factorization on 20. So we could take out a five or a two, five times four, two times two. So we have two times two times five times X to the fourth. And you can either write out X times X times X times X, or I like to put them in pairs since we're in, in I'm sorry, squares, pair squares. Uh, I like to put them in squares because I know that one comes out. Now, if this had been a cube root, I would have put them in powers of three. If it had been a fourth root, I would have put them in powers of four. So who, remember for every pair, one gets to come out. So a two gets to come out, an X and another X get to come out. And what's stuck under here is a five. So your final answer is two X squared, square root of five. So that's what you want to do is you, you want to try to simplify. You can. So Anybody want to ask me about something else? Questions about this before I erase it? Um. Which can you go over number 79? Yeah, 79? Yeah. It's in my board dictionary. Try right here. Uh oh. So good. Okay, 79. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't give you anything this hard. It's the cube root of, what is it, 54 xy cubed? And you are subtracting. So it's minus y times the cube root. So little. Can't see it. Is it 128x? Okay, did I write this down right? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So this doesn't, remember you have to have like indices and like radicands, and we don't have that. But it looks like there's perfect squares hiding out in here. So Let's do a prime factorization of 54. Well, you can take out a two, two times two is four, one remainder, 27, three times nine, three times three. So this is the cube root of two times three times three times three X, Y cubed. Over here, you have a Y that's out. Prime factorization on 128, so take out a 2, 2 times what is 12, 6, 2 times what is 8, take out another 2, 2 times what is 6, 2 times what is 4, take out another 2, what is that, 16, take out another 2, take out another 2 times 4 is 8, take out another 2, there's lots of 2s. So what? instead of writing all these 2s out, I'm going to put them in powers of 3. So there's three twos. There's another set with one two left over. So there were three, four, five, six, seven twos. So there's your seven twos. And then you have an X. All right, so now we bring out whoever gets to come out. So a three and a Y get to come out. Two times three is, what is that? Six X stuck under there. Two times three times X. And then over here, we have one, two, twos coming out. And we get, what is that? Two X stuck under there.
So did I leave off something here? I One, think two, it's the six X. I don't think it goes, or I don't think it's six. Oh, it's not, it's two X. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so now since we have the same indices and the same radican, we can add these. So what happened, let me, let me make one more step. This is negative four Y. And now you just three minus four is negative one. So negative one Y times the cube root, do not change the radicals. Okay, that's correct. I didn't get one with this much work, so. So basically, you're just simplifying the radicals, and after you simplify them by pulling out all the perfect cubes, you look to see if you have the same index and the same radicand, and then you can combine them. And as long as this is a Y and that's a Y, you just mess with the numbers in front. You don't mess with the radical at all. It's Think of it as 3A minus 4A. You don't change the variable, right? Same thing with radicals. You don't change the radical. You treat them like terms. Okay, go ahead. Anything else? Can you do number 93? 93? Yeah. Yeah, you want to know how to do this one. So this is one you want to know how to do. Okay, this is what, 20x to the one half? Do not change it to a radical. Um, 5x to the one fourth. Okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna simplify the five and the 20. So both of them are divisible by five. So five times what is five, one. Five times what is 20? And now remember the quotient rule, it says keep the base on the top and subtract the exponents. Now the problem with this is you, if you're gonna add fractions, I don't care if they're regular fractions or exponential fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So the common denominator is four. That one is redundant. So remember what I was talking about? If you leave this on the test like that, it will mark it wrong. It's not wrong, but it will mark it wrong. Um, with math etiquette, if there's a one there, don't put a one. We know there's a one there. Okay, so this would be two fourths minus one fourth is four X to the one fourth. So just remember that any fractions, whether they're exponents or not, you have to get a common denominator when you're adding. Did that? Yeah. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, anything else? Okay, are you guys okay with P3? You guys ready, ready for that exam? Number 71, please. Um, in P4? Uh, P3. Okay, P3. Okay, so P3. Oh, I was doing P3 problems, huh? Okay. Yeah. 74. I'm not going to give one that hard. Um, try to stay focused on, you know, the ones, like the, the six problems at the beginning of each set. Um, I'm not going to give one that hard. Remember, as you go through the problems, they get harder 60. and harder. Huh? It was 64. 64? Yeah. What is it The These numbers are so little, I'm going blind. Five. What is that? Negative two to the fifth? Yeah. 
Okay, think about this. Remember the table I gave you and I said with an odd index, you're guaranteed one real group. So that table I gave you, when you have an odd index, you're guaranteed one real group. So what do you think the root is? Because there's five of them. So this is negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. And since there's five of them, one comes out. Now, if you had had this, what's the answer? Not real. Yes. Good job. Yep. There is no answer. This is imaginary. You cannot have a negative. See, you can have a negative when you have an odd index. You cannot have a negative when you have an even index. So you cannot have a negative under the radical with an even index that's real. You cannot have a negative under the radical and get a real answer when you have an even index. Like let's say you had um, the sixth root of negative 32. The minute, the minute you see the even index with a negative, no real solutions. So this is not real. Yeah, I'm glad you asked me about that because you're going to have to know that on this test. So I am going to test you. Do you understand when you have an even index that you cannot have a negative under the radical? When you have an odd index, you're guaranteed one real root. So that's good you asked about that. All right, anything else right now? Uh, can you do number 35? Okay, this one you're gonna have to know how to do. Okay, so this problem you have to know how to do. My board will dry. So make sure you know how to do this problem. What is it? Six square root of 17x minus eight square root of 17x. Now remember, you have to have like radicals. So that means the same index, which is square root, the same radicand, which is the same. So you can add them, and all you do is combine the numbers in front. Don't change the radical. So you're subtracting, right? So what's 6 and negative 8? That's it. So when you have the same index and the same radicand, you just combine the numbers in front. Did that help? Yes. Okay. All right, you guys are getting lots of tips for the exam. You guys are doing a really good job, by the way, asking me questions. And um, really the only other thing is just try to stay on top of the as much as possible. Um, as soon as, you know, as soon as I sign them or talk about them, try to start, try not to get behind so that you can stay up with me and asking questions. Okay. Other, other problems. Can you do number 91? Yeah, you have to know how to do this. Rational exponents. So 7x to the one-third, what is it, 2x to the, was it one-fourth? So this is, this is a product multiplication. The one we did before was division. So remember, when you multiply monomials, you add the exponents. When you divide them, you subtract. So what you do on this, you just multiply the seven and the two and the rule set, the product rule says to keep the base and add the exponents. And so once again, we have to get a common denominator, right? So 
So you get 14x to the 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths, which is 14x to the 7 twelfths. Make sure you know how to do this. Do you guys, do you guys get this? Can you guys unmute yourself and just tell me, yeah, you get this, you can do this, you can get this right? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Cool. Anything else? Can you do number 79? Mm, I don't know if I put one on there like this. What is it, the cube root? Didn't I just do this one? I think I just did this one. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I already did this one. Anything else right now, guys? Uh, can you do number 41? In P3? Yeah. Yeah, you have to know how to do this one. Um, is it three radical 18? And then is it plus five radical? Um, the way these are right now, you cannot add them. So when you have the same index and different radicals, add them. So what you're, what you're looking at is you're like, hey, is somebody hiding out in here? It looks like somebody's hiding out. And like somebody's hiding out. All right, so let's do a prime factorization on 18. So on 18, you can take out a two or three times what is 18, take out a two. So this would be two times three times three, or you could do it in your head. These small ones you should be able to do in your head by now. 50, you can do it off to the side and you just think about it. Is it five times 10? And is it five times 10, five times 10? So for every pair, one comes out. So when a three comes out, do you multiply or add? Go ahead, multiply. Listen. You multiply. So when you take out a three, three times three is nine. And over here, when you take out a five, it doesn't matter if they're next to each other because multiplication is commutative. When you take out a five, you get 25. And now look at that. You have like radicals. So the radical is two and 25 and nine is what, 34? So don't, don't on the test, don't look at this and go, oh, we can't simplify that. You can simplify it. And when you do, you could have like radicals. Can you guys unmute yourself and tell me if you get this one? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it as well. I get it. Okay, good. And what you're going to do is you're just going to, you're just going to keep practicing over and over again, keep working the problems over and over again, because as you work them over and over again correctly, you are developing and establishing your confidence. So I never, I don't think I shared this with you, but I failed every te test I ever took. So when I was at UCR, 
I would study, I would get the highest assignment grade. I would study more than anyone else. And then I, I have, so I passed out one time. I was hospitalized one time. Um, I hit my head on the ground one time. Um, so I, I know all about test anxiety. Most people don't have test anxiety. Um, most people just have a lack of confidence. So when you keep working these problems over and over again, and you work them correctly, you are building up your confidence because what you should feel like when you take the exam, you should be like, I did 10 of those. I got this. I did five of those. I got this. Um, that's how you should feel when you take an exam in math. If you don't feel that way, that means you didn't practice enough. So you want to practice so much that you want to feel like, I got this. I did a whole bunch of those. I can do it. See, for me, I would always study the wrong thing. So in math, nobody ever told me that I have to work problems. So what I would do is I'd read the book, and who knows how many times. I would look at my notes. Nobody ever told me, you know, work problems. Put your pencil to the paper and work problems because by just looking at things, you falsely convince yourself that you know what you really don't. And then when you put your pen to the paper, you don't know what to do. So the, the, the most effective way to study for a math exam is to work problems, get a bunch of paper, get a bunch of scratch paper, and just start working as many problems as you can. The more problems you work correctly, the higher grades you're gonna get. And nobody ever told me that. I was always just looking at my notes and looking at my assignments. I was always looking instead of doing. You have to work math problems to build your confidence. The other thing too is you wanna work problems that you have the answers to. So you don't wanna work a bunch of problems and not check your work. I mean, you wanna have the answers available to self-assess. Like, I'm gonna work a problem, did I do it right? Yes, I did. I'm gonna work a problem, did I do it right? No, I messed up. So see, that means that I would get it wrong on the exam. So you always want to self-assess and make sure that whatever problems you work, that you have the answer so you can check them. All right, anything else right now? That's my pep talk for the day. Anybody want me to work another problem? Can you do number 53? Um, I didn't give one like that. So I guess my biggest concern is when you keep asking me, all of you, for these harder problems, I'm wondering, do you know how to do the easy ones? So I'm hoping you know how to do the easy ones because you're not asking me about those. And those are the ones that you absolutely know, need to know how to do. Okay, on this, you have to think of that as a quantity and you have to multiply by the conjugate. So those can't be separated. So you're multiplying by radical five minus radical three over radical five minus radical three. And the reason why we can do that is because that fraction is one and you can multiply by one and not change the problem. So in the denominator, I talked about the FOIL, and I said, when you're multiplying by conjugates, you don't have to do the outer and the inner, they always cancel out. So radical five times radical five is five. And a positive times a negative is a negative, and radical three times radical three is three. So the denominator is two. On the top, they might leave the answer like this. <clears throat> They might leave the answer as six times that, and they might mark it wrong. If you multiply it up, I would multiply it out and let me know if it marks it wrong. So you need to distribute. So six radical five minus six radical three can be simplified. See, you see those three terms? They're all divisible by two. So if you just left it like that, it's gonna be wrong in my opinion. So you have to divide everything by two so you get a one in the denominator, 
Two times what is six? Three. And two times what is six? Three. So that is the correct answer. Uh, that is the simplified answer. Um, and you always want to simplify. So you would never leave an answer like this for sure and mark this wrong. So you have to all, if you can simplify in all three terms, you must simplify in all three terms. So let me do an easier problem over here. Let's say you had um, 6x plus 9 over 12. All of those guys are divisible by 3. So 3 times what is 12? 4. 3 times what is 6? 2. 3 times what is 9? That would be the answer simplified. So that's the simplified. Hold on. 3, right? 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times what is 6? 2. 3 times what is 9? 3. That would be the simplified answer. And if I look at my book, that is the answer. Um, they left it like this. But like I said, um, if, you, if you write this answer and they mark it wrong, you need to let me know so I can check it. So I definitely wouldn't leave the answer like this because you're in danger of them wanting you to multiply it out. So they need to be more clear. All right, other questions? Can you do number 43? Yeah, I, I didn't give anything this hard. Like I said, you got to pull all the perfect squares out. These don't look like they go together, but there's, there's guys hidden in there. So there's perfect squares hidden in all these. Pull them all out. I think we can do the prime factorization of eight in our head, two times two times two. And 32, I think it's five twos. Because two times two times two times two is 16 times two. Make sure you run that radical out. 72, we could do it in our head is nine times eight. So nine times eight. And then 75 is, who knows, take out a 5, 25, 5 times 15, 5 times 5 times 3. So pull them all out, see what you have. So for every pair, one gets to come out. So 2 times 3 is 6, and a 2 stuck. You get to take out. Two twos, which is a four, a two gets stuck. On this one, you get to take out a two and a three. So three would be nine, a two would be 18. If you don't want to skip that step, you don't have to. Radical two. A five gets to come out, and that's a three. So it's like, who gets to go together? Well, those three go together, the minus radical five does not. I'm sorry, minus radical three. So I add the positives 18 and four and 24 minus four is 20. And those do not go together, so they have to stay apart. A lot of work, I didn't give you one like that. Other questions? All right, well, I'm gonna be teaching the next lesson um, and it's on factoring. And there's basically seven factoring methods. I would not be absent. 
Um, I normally do not go over this in pre-calculus, but I'm going to assume that you do not know all the factory methods. And so it's going to be uh, very important uh, that you know how to do this. Um, I want to start the lesson right now, uh, but it'll only be the start of a lesson um, for P5. We're still doing a review of Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Um, this is, the factoring is something you should know backwards and forwards. Um, I don't really know if teachers understand the importance of factoring in the higher level math courses, but factoring is super important because in higher level math courses, you use factoring to simplify. So, this is um, lesson P5. I'm only going to do a couple of factory methods. Um, there are seven of them, um, but I will um, do as many as I can right now. All right, the first one, the first factory method is the greatest common factor. also known as the GCF, the greatest common factor. So basically, we're going to do the factoring like we did factorizations. So I didn't always teach it that way, but I do now, and it works together nicely because students know how to do a prime factorization, they're able to factor. So for example, let's say you had two minus four x polynomial, and if they wanted you to factor it, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna build a big cake upside down. And you're gonna look at what's common. So what is common in these three terms? Well, definitely a two. Um, it looks like there's an x. This guy doesn't have an x, so that's not common. And we're going to do exactly, so prime numbers out, we're taking out the biggest common number and the biggest common variable, and now we're going to multiply, we're going to divide by multiplying. Two times what is that? Two times what is that? Negative. Two times what is six? And then we look at this cake layer and go, do we miss anything? Did we get everybody out? Yes, we did. So guess what you just did? You did the distributive property backwards. So factoring is doing what we've done in the past back, I'm uh, sorry, GCF and factoring is, is what we've done forwards in the past, we're going backwards. And if you're wondering, well, why are we doing this? What's the, what's the point of this? The point of it is, is, we're trying to take a quadratic and we're trying to break the power down so we can solve it eventually. So that's what we're doing is we're, we're gonna be taking higher degree polynomials like cubics, quartics, quintics, and we're gonna to try to break them down so we can solve them later. So this is just a little piece of a, of a bigger picture. So in and of itself, factoring is not important is important for something we need to be, be able to do later and make our life easy. So anyhow, at least I got us started. I did one example. Um, I will teach this next time. So make sure you're present in class. This is some important stuff. All right. So I will see you, what, tomorrow? So don't be late, make sure you're on time. And don't forget about assignment, what is it, P4, do tonight. All right, have a good day. Bye guys, I'll see you later. Anybody have any, I'm gonna turn this recorder off, um, but anybody have any other questions for me?